Hello folks, I hope you're doing well. We are back down here in the greenhouse and I thought I'd do just a little bit of a follow-up to my Watch Seeds to Sow in January video and actually get on with sowing some of the seeds. And one of the questions I keep saying is, is there enough light, is there enough heat to get seeds on the go at this time of year? And well, you know, to be blunt, yes, there is. As long as it's the right seeds and the right varieties, but I'll, I'll, I'll come to that in a little bit. Some of them that I'm gonna to do today, the chilies in particular, well, they're the main ones, they do need artificial heat, artificial light, they're gonna be mollycoddled, they're gonna be looked after, they're gonna be looked after in the house. They do need a little bit of extra special care and attention, but I'll come to that. But the others, the others don't. There is enough heat, there is enough light at this time of year to get things on the go. And again, as long as it's the right ones, as long as they are hardy varieties. So something, for example, this one here, the broad bean that I'm gonna sow today, which is Super Aqua Dulce, they're actually hardy down to around about minus 10 degrees. And some of them, like I'm just having a look on the packet live here on the, on the camera. Normally it will tell you on the packet if something is hardy or not. So in terms of hardiness, if something's hardy, it's resistant to the cold. So it will resist really, really cold weather. It'll resist a hard frost. Again, they'll do down to about minus 10. They might show a little bit of frost damage on the tips of the leaves and things if you've got them outside. They might get a little bit of discoloration, but they'll recover and they'll keep going. Beyond that, you've got something called half hardy. They'll probably resist a light frost. They're not take a heavy frost, will take a light frost. So when you're looking at your last frost dates, yeah, maybe he's gonna be sowing half hard. He's about a month, six weeks before your last frost date. Get the seeds germinated, get them on the go and get them out just as those frosts are sort of coming to an end. You may get a, la a late frost, a light frost and they'll survive. But if you get a hard frost, they won't. So we're looking at the hardy ones. And you know, in, in this day and age, I, I couldn't give you right now a definitive list of all the hardy things you should be growing at this time of year. If there's something you think, I quite fancy growing some of that, like like cauliflower. Let me get my, my cauliflower seeds out here from the little box I've got. This one here, all the year round, a good hardy variety that you can sow in January and get going. You might think, ah, oh, I quite fancy something different. You've got the world of information at your fingertips. Get out there on the internet do a bit of searching about. There's all sorts of, if, if you Googled for, you know, list of hardy vegetables to grow, you'll probably get a massive list, way better than a list that I can tell you. But what I will tell you and what I will show you is the seeds that I am gonna be sowing this month. Anyway, enough of me waffling on about that. We've got enough time for waffling when we're doing some of this stuff. Let me get things set up around and about. We'll get some seeds sown and I'll show you how I'm doing different ones. So back with you in just a jiffy. So just while I'm getting a few things sort of set up around and about here, I just wanted to mention quickly, I've started a new Patreon and I've popped a link down below in the description. Please go and take a look. You might notice in today's video, we've got a little bit of different film and I might look a little bit different because I've been investing in some new kits. So you're on a new camera that we're filming with here. I've got the old camera set up here that you might be able to see, you might not. And hopefully that's gonna give you a bit of a, an eagle eye view of what I'm doing whilst I'm talking to this one. If we can switch it around and edit and the things and make it look all funky. But in order to make that sustainable, please take a look at the Patreon as well as all this new funky stuff I've got here. On Patreon, you'll get extra content, you'll see. I, I wanna try and get more chat going on there about different experiments that we might do and experiments for the channel. What sort of footage you like. My last video, I tried a slightly different format, seemed to go down all right. And I'd love to have a bit of a chat back and forth about that. Anyway, enough of me waffling on about Patreon, but let's have a look at this. So I'm using a deep root trainer here, and I'm not gonna labor this one too much because when I did the Hardy Sweet Peas, the, the video there was using the root trainer as well. What I mainly wanted to show you with this one that I'm gonna do the broad beans in. So anything that I'm doing sort of peas or beans or anything of that kind of ilk, they'll all be done in deep root trainers. Now this one is slightly different. Let me just show you there. And the benefit of this one is it splits open like that. So it's dead easy to take whatever you've got grown in out there, the little sort of plug plant that you've created and you pop that in the ground. And that lives inside this frame and you've got loads of different rows of them. And then that 
sits inside this gravel tray. It's a nice, easy, compact system. One thing I would say to remember, when you're using a seed tray like this, one of these deep root trainers, they do take quite a lot of compost. So just remember that. And speaking of the compost that I'm using, this is still the overly expensive Dobby's seed sowing compost that we got. I have picked up some of the uh, Melcourt Silver Grow. That is my preferred choice of compost for seed sowing, especially at this time of year. But unfortunately, the garden centre was shut when I went to get some for doing the sweet peas. So I had to, to pop to Dobby's and pick some up and use that. And it honestly, still, it's still, it's still painful. It's still a sore one, even now, to pay that sort of six, was it six nine nine or seven eight nine? I can't remember. For twenty five years, broke my heart. But anyway. We've just popped some of that and that compost again, mixed in with perlite, big fan of using the perlite in with stuff just to control moisture. And it's, <coughs> it's fun, there's a bit of a dodgy one there. Let me just move that out. And I saw a, th there was a thing ages ago about which way do you sow broad beans? Cause look, one end looks like that and one end looks like that. So they're different at both ends. You know what the best way I find to sow them is? on the side because nature always finds a way so you don't have to worry whether the the little bit with the black end is pointing up or pointing down grow on its side and i can guarantee you nature will find a way for your broad beans to grow in the cor correct direction and again with these i'm just pushing them in there relatively firmly because i want to get them getting that contact with the compost to get these to germinate. Now, these are one of the ones that, you know, that, that they're pretty hardy, and I just I just need one more there with the packet. They're pretty hardy, and they'll germinate pretty well. So I'm actually gonna take them in the house, because I mean, in, in the greenhouse that we're in now, it's unheated, so it still gets a bit cold overnight. And if I just left them in the greenhouse, it would take ages. It's gonna take a long, long time for these to germinate and I'm and I'm just doing a half a tray here as well while I've got you I'm not going to do the full tray and sort of take up take up all your time and bore you with me doing the whole lot and yeah so they'll they'll come in the house again they'll go in the spare room the spare room generally doesn't have the heating on in it but it is you know the rest of the house is, is heated all the time because we're we, we both my wife and I we work from home most of the time now like a lot of people do since Covid so the heating's on quite a lot during the day. So there is that sort of ambient heat in the house during the day. But there you go. You can see them now. I'll do the other half of this off camera later on. And there it is in a lovely little tray. There is a lid to go on the top of it. As to where that lid is at the moment, I don't actually know. It's somewhere. It might be in the shed. It might be in here. But I'll find it and I'll sit on top of there. One of the things to remember about the lids, and I'll show you with these ones as well, they have a little vent on the top of them. I nearly always have the little vent open all the time. And that's just so anything that I'm growing in it, it doesn't dampen off. It doesn't get too damp inside and it kills them off. Anyway, next thing I'm gonna do is some cauliflowers and then we'll then we'll come to the main event. We'll come to the chilies at the end. So I'm just scooping up some of this compost mix that we've got there. And if it looks a bit wet, in the tray there, that's because it is. I'm doing it a slightly different way this time round. And sorry, I'm, I'm just grabbing the seeds from over here. And I've watered the compost beforehand. So the compost has been watered and then the seeds are going in, it's getting topped up and I'm not gonna water it afterwards. So we'll just leave them. It's the same as what we did with the sweet peas. And this is how many seeds I'm sort of putting in this tray there. There's maybe about, I don't know how many is there, 20, 30 maybe. And we're just gonna sprinkle them almost evenly across there. But sorry, I just, just went off on a tangent there. Um, as I was saying, it's 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 been watered. So I'm gonna water, I'm not gonna water afterwards until all the all the little seeds have germinated and we'll we'll prick them out and move them on. And and, and speaking of that, again it at this time of the year, I think some people, they maybe think it's gonna be a little bit of a faff, you know, all this 
looking after all these seeds and all the different things that you've got to do and whatnot. But you know, it really isn't that much of a faff. It's not that difficult. I've put these in here, in there. You sort of, it's taken me what? A minute, two minutes, and that's with me waffling them to a camera. It's taken hardly any time at all. And I do, I do want, I'm just putting them there. I do have labels written out for them that I'll add at the end so I know what's what on each of these trays, especially for the trillies when I've got a few different varieties. But yeah, they, they don't take much looking after. All the seeds that have just been sown there, so the broad beans, when they're germinated, they come on, they're just going to get planted straight out. I won't move them on anywhere out of those root trainers. Things that you see going in these little quarter size seed trays, they will get pricked out, they'll get moved on. And they'll get moved on into something like this, a sort of a cell tray that's a bit bigger. And then, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll play it by ear a little bit. We'll see what the weather's like outside. We'll see how big the plants are, whether they need to be moved on and kept in the greenhouse, or whether I need to put them out. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But it doesn't take a lot of effort. And honestly, it's one of the nicest things about growing your own is growing things from seed and just giving stuff a little bit of, a little bit of TLC. Looking after things, you, you don't have to molly coddle it too much like you do with the chilies. But I'll I'll I'll, I'll come to the chilies in a minute because they are going to get a bit of a bit of special care and attention, I think, going forward. But I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it nice and simple. I don't like to complicate things too much because then it maybe does become a little bit of a faff. But even though we're going to molly coddle the chilies, it's not complicated to get them sown and get them on the go. And I am going to use pretty much exactly the same technique as I've just used for the cauliflower. So we've got one of these quarter size seed trays here and I'm just gonna pick one variety out of the box and let me remember which one it is. Not that one because I'm gonna struggle to pronounce the name. Here's a nice straightforward one. Sugar Rush Stripey. There we go, that's the one I'm going for here. And these Chili seeds I've got here are from a place called Chili Chump, and I will pop a link in the description down below. Now, my, my hands are muddy, and these little plastic packets are a bit awkward. And I'm going to do five, so I'm taking five seeds. And that's one thing to remember when you do order some of these more sort of specialist seeds, like the different varieties of chilies and tomatoes and, and sweet peppers and whatnot is that you don't get loads of cucumbers, cucumbers in particular, you don't get loads of them in the packet. So just remember that you don't get loads of them. So just put five of them in there, space them out in that one, two, then one in the middle, then another one, two sort of pattern inside the seed tray. Top on them up there with the compost, get it nicely spaced out, and then just give it a bit, bit of a press down on the top, not too hard, not too light get some contact in there. Jobs are good and the lid's gonna go on that. These are going to go and sit on the heated propagator. These chilies, if you remember, if any of you saw the, the, the Potty Mouth Garden Club chili special, chilies need a bit of heat to get them going. You know, you're well up into the mid to high 20 degrees centigrade that you need to get chilies to germinate. So I've got a Garland Super 7 propagator. These are gonna go and sit on that more about heated propagators in the next video. I'm not gonna labor them too much about what I'm gonna do with it because I'm just gonna duplicate what I'm saying when I do that. But anyway, just a video to show you that this time of year, get seeds on the go, get things growing. It's okay, I mean, it's okay outside here at the moment, but it's been a bit dull recently, it's a bit cold. It's a bit wet and it doesn't half cheer you off getting some seeds on the go and it's dead easy to do. And I guess getting them on the go nice and early at this time of year, gives you a little bit of a head start. And for me, it just makes it easier for managing my time. Because once you get to sort of springtime, March, April sort of time, when there's so many more seeds getting done and so much more on the go, if you've started these now, if you've brought them along a little bit, if you've already got stuff out nice and early, remember those hardy varieties, look them up on the internet, it just makes everything else so much easier. Anyway, if you like this video, please think about subscribing. It's absolutely free. I think there might be a red button sort of thing down below on the screen. Just click that or if you wait till the very end of the video, a little picture thing will pop up and you can click that and that's you subscribed for absolutely nothing. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it. If you are sowing seeds at this time of year, what are you growing? What t techniques are you using? Do you use heated propagators? Do you just take them into the house? How do you do it? 
please let me know in the comments down below. I love to see what everybody else is up to. Anyway, that is me done for today. Thank you very much for watching, folks, and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.